I've got a nice combinatorics problem for you guys today. So we want to define the alternating sum of a subset, which I'll call A, and it's a subset of the set of natural numbers between 1 and N, so 1, 2, 3, all the way up to N. We'll use the notation S of A, and it will be A1 minus A2 plus A3, all the way up plus or minus AM, depending on if M is even or odd. And that is where A is the subset a sub 1, A sub 2, all the way up to A sub M, and, that, and those are in order, so that A1 is bigger than A2, is bigger than A3, and AM is the smallest. And our goal is to find a closed form for the sum of all such alternating sums. So in other words, we calculate all of the alternating sums over all of the subsets of 1 through N, and then we add up all of those alternating sums and see what number we get. Okay, great. So let's do like a little exploration example first before we maybe jump into the full solution. So to explore, I'm gonna set n equal to three, and that's because it's well known that the number of subsets of an n element set is two to the n, and so three is maybe just right so that we have two to the three or eight subsets. So that's just enough so that we can maybe see some structure, but not too many so that we have like a lot of work to do. So let's maybe look at all of the subsets of one through three. So we'll make a chart here. So I'll say here subsets of the set containing one, two, and three. And then over here, we'll have the alternating sum of each of these subsets. So there'll be eight entries in this table. So let's start here with the empty set. Notice the alternating sum of all of the elements in the empty set, that'll just be zero, kind of obviously. And then we'll run through the singletons. So the singleton one, well that alternating sum is just one because we always start with the positive. And then next we've got the singleton two. So that'll give us two. The singleton three, that'll give us three the singleton one, two, so that'll give us two minus one, which is equal to one. That's because we go from largest to smallest. The set containing one and three, so that'll give us three minus one, which is two. The set containing two and three, so that gives us three minus two, which is one. And then finally, the whole set, one, two, three, that'll give us three minus two plus one. So let's see what that is. That's gonna be equal to two. So I wanna notice that these guys are paired off into alternating sums that sum up to three. So for example, this one right here could be paired with this one right here. And we see that three plus zero is equal to three. Furthermore, here we've got one with a two, and here we've got one which is one, two plus one is equal to three, and we've got all sorts of pairings like that. So it's kind of obvious to pair the set containing three with the empty set, but the other pairings are not so obvious. So if we look at these for a little bit and kind of try to find the structure, you see that we can pair each set with a companion set either containing three or not containing three. So notice one does not contain three, so we'll pair it with one comma three. Or one comma three does contain three, so we'll pair it with a singleton one. So let's maybe put a blue dot next to these two sets to show that we are pairing those with each other. Then let's see, two comma three will get paired with the singleton two because the only way they differ from each other is that one of them has a three and one of them does not have a three. And then finally, we have this one left over, which is one comma two will get paired with the whole set, one comma two comma three. And that's because this one contains a three, but this one doesn't. But other than that, they are all the same. But now notice if we add up all of these, so notice we're going to add up the blue dots and the red dots and these orange dots and then plus the purple dots and each of those add up to three. So we get three plus three plus three plus three. And so we get 12 or maybe I want to write this as four times three. 
But how is four special and how is three special? Like in other words, how could we generalize that? Well, three is the number that we set n equal to. So notice that this is equal to three. And then four is half the number of subsets that we started with. That's three times two to the three divided by two. And that comes from like pairing these subsets with each other. Okay, so now looking at this exploration, I think we're ready to maybe write down a careful solution of the general case. So now that we've explored and we've come up with a guess, Let's maybe go ahead and look at the general case. So I'm gonna introduce some notation. I'm gonna set bracket n equal to the set containing one, two, all the way up to n, just so that we can have a shorthand for that. And next, I wanna notice that the power set of bracket n, in other words, the set containing all subsets of one through n, can be broken into two disjoint pieces. So I'm gonna do that like this. So the power set of bracket n, so in other words, this is the set containing all subsets like I said. This is the disjoint union of a set which I'll call capital X and a set which I'll call capital Y. So it's the union of these two sets, but that dot up there means that union is disjoint. But what does disjoint means? It means that X intersect Y is the empty set. So now how are we gonna build X and Y? Well, X is gonna be built like this. So it's gonna be all A that are in the power set of N, such that N is an element from A. So in other words, it's gonna be every subset of the set containing one through n that contains that largest element. And then next, we're gonna set y equal to all a in the power set containing it of n such that n is not an element from a. So this is gonna be all subsets of one through n that do not contain n. So in our example, we saw that there was a one-to-one -one correspondence between X and Y. And we can define that one-to-one -one correspondence via a bijection and its inverse. So let's define F from X to Y like this. So F is going to take A and it's going to replace it with A minus the singleton N. In other words, it's going to remove N from that subset A. So obviously that's going to take an element from X and send it to Y. And then next, we can see that very clearly F inverse will go from Y to X and it can be defined by F of A equals A union the singleton N. So let's maybe look at an example real quick. So let's say we've got a subset two, three, seven, and this is gonna be a subset of the set containing one through eight. So I'll write it like this, bracket eight. So notice that this is inside of Y, which means if we evaluate it at F inverse, we're going to get exactly this set with the addition of the element eight. So we'll have two, three, seven, eight. So now let's do another little example. Let's say we've got one, four, eight. Again, that's gonna be a subset of the set containing one through eight. Now this one obviously contains eight. So we apply the forward direction of the function, not the inverse. So F evaluating this subset is just going to remove the eight. So the next thing that's important to notice is that the alternating sum of an original set, one, four, eight, well, in this case, this is gonna be eight minus four plus one. So let's see, that's eight minus three, which is equal to five. And then the alternating sum of the image, well, that's just gonna be four minus one is three. And then if we sum five with three, we get eight, which was the original number n. Then similarly, we can see that the exact same thing happens here. And so that maybe gives us some sort of claim which would help us prove this in general. So let's maybe go ahead and clean up the board and then we will look at... So on the last board, we introduced a bunch of notation. First, we called bracket n the set containing 1, 2, 3, all the way up to n. 
Then next, we decomposed the power set of this bracket n, in other words, the set of all subsets of one through n, as x disjoint union y, where x was all subsets containing n, in other words, containing that largest possible element, and y was all subsets not containing n. Then next, we constructed a bijection from x to y, and thus that bijection has an inverse. So we called the forward direction f, and what that does is removes n from the subset, and the reverse direction we called f inverse, and what that does is includes it back into the subset. But under this setup, and it's easy to show that those are inverse operations of each other, but them being inverse operations of each other means that they're both bijections. Thus, y is really just the image of x under this map f. So we don't even really need to think about this set y anymore. We can just think of it as the image of this set x under the map f. So next what we want to do is show for all a in x, this alternating sum of a plus the alternating sum of f of a equals n, where a being an x means that it does contain n. Okay, so let's maybe go ahead and see how to do this. So let's say that a is an element from x. So what that tells us is that a is a subset of the set containing one through n, but it most definitely contains n. So that means we can write a as n comma a1 comma a2 all the way up to am, where a1 through am are maybe in decreasing order, but most definitely we contain n. Okay, great. But then it's easy to calculate f evaluated at a. It's just gonna be this set but without the n. So it's just gonna be a1, a2, all the way up to am. And again, we're using this like kind of standard notation which we built over here in the statement of the problem. And that is that a1 is bigger than a2 and so on and so forth. Okay, good. Now let's go ahead and calculate this alternating sum of a and this alternating sum of f of a and see that we get exactly the result that we want to. So this alternating sum of a will be n minus a1 plus a2 plus all the way up plus or minus a m. Okay, good. But then this alternating sum of f of a will be plus a1 minus a2 all the way up to minus plus a m. And the important thing here is that the signs are exactly opposite, giving us all of this nice cancellation. And thus, we have the sum of the alternating sum of the subset A and the alternating sum of the subset F of A is equal to N. Okay, good. So let's maybe get rid of this proof and we'll finish the whole thing off. Okay, now we're ready to finish everything off. So we wanna find a closed form for the sum of all such alternating sums. In other words, what we wanna do is sum over all subsets of the set containing one through n. So that's gonna be all over all elements of the power set of bracket n using our previous notation of this alternating sum of these subsets, which we've denoted by S of a. So now what we can do is use the fact that this power set breaks up into elements from X and elements from Y. So we can write this as the sum over all A in X of SA plus the sum over all A in Y of SA. But then using what we noticed before, Y is equal to F of X. So that means we can replace this y here with fx. In other words, the image of the set x under the map f. So that allows us to re-index this sum and we'll re-index this sum by replacing a with f inverse of a. So that's gonna allow us to write this first one as the sum over all a and x, s a. And the second one will be the sum over all a in x of s of f of a. And that's by that re-indexing. But since we re-indexed it like this, we can combine these two sums together and we'll say, see that this is gonna be the sum over all a in x 
of s of a plus s of f of a. But then we know what that number is from our previous claim. That's equal to n. So that's going to be the sum over all a in x of just the number n. But now how many subsets are in this set x? Well, that's a good question. But notice, all you need to be to be in x is a subset of the set containing 1 through n that contains n. So it's easy to see that that's going to be exactly half of the subsets. In other words, that's going to be 2 to the n minus 1 subsets. So we're adding n to itself 2 to the n minus 1 times, leaving us with n times 2 to the n minus 1. And that's a good place to stop.